Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, honour guests, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, Madame, si, Monsieur. I'm honoured to be reading the citation for this ceremony. The, our honorary graduate this morning is Sir Gordon Ying Sheng Wu. In Chinese, Wu Ying Sheng, a visionary entrepreneur, philanthropist, and innovator, Sir Gordon Ying Sheng Wu is recognized with an honorary Doctor of Laws for his passionate commitment to higher education and his transformative impact on East Asia and the world. Sir Gordon was one of the first international students to come to Canada from Hong Kong. Arriving at the University of Manitoba in 1953, Sir Gordon studied at the University of Manitoba for only one year before going to Princeton University to earn his civil engineering degree in 1958. But he never forgot the special opportunity the University of Manitoba first afforded him. He has given generously to the University of Manitoba, helping support the construction of the Faculty of Engineering's new home, the Engineering Information and Technology Complex. Before Sir Gordon left for North America, his father, the son of an immigrant pig farmer, foresaw the expansion of automotive transportation in China and launch Hong Kong's first taxi service. Upon returning home from his studies, Sir Gordon showed exquisite business acumen, expanding the family business portfolio to include hospitality and infrastructure interests. This inspired Sir Gordon to create Hopwell Holdings Limited, a Hong Kong-based company that has helped modernize China Hong Kong, the Philippines, and Indonesia by building bridges, superhighways, and power stations. Sir Gordon is a member of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, an advisor to the China Development Bank. He's also a member of the International Finance Corporation for the World Bank and an associate director for the United Nationals Association in China. Sir Gordon has donated $118 million to Princeton University and made significant contributions to universities in Hong Kong, the University of Manitoba, and the University of Winnipeg. As a result of the community support, Sir Gordon has received numerous awards and honorary degrees from Hong Kong Polytechnic University at the University of Strathclyde and the University of Edinburgh. He was Man of the Year International Road Federation, USA, 1994. Businessman of the Year, South China Morning Post, 1991. Asia Corporate Leader, Asia Finance Magazine, 1991 and International CEO of the Year, George Washington University, 1996, to name just a few of the many designations. The King of Belgium, Albert II, awarded Sir Gordon the Chevalier de l'Ordre de la Corone in 1985, and the Officer de l'Ordre de la Corone in 2007. In 1997, the Queen of England knighted him into the Order of St. Michael and St. George. Then, in 2007, he received the Order of Croatian Danica by the Republic of Croatia. As one of the pioneering forces behind East Asia's economic rise, Sir Gordon continues to dedicate his prodigious engineering skills and foresight to designing and building vertical axes. 
wind-powered turbines to help China tap clean energy. At age 73, he was not stopped trailblazing. Mr. Chancellor, it is an honor for me to ask on behalf of the Senate of the University of Manitoba that you confer upon Sir Gordon Ying Sheng Wu the degree of Doctor of Laws no, Honoris Causa. Thank you. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this University, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Wu. Mrs. Chancellor, Mr. President, fellow graduates, students, ladies and gentlemen, it's with a lot of emotions that I made this trip after first arriving here 59 years ago as a young, bewildered young man, not knowing what the future is like. I left here nine months later. I can't stand the cold. But anyway, uh, after 58 years, uh, 57 years of absence, I am here and I'm indeed very grateful. The trip coming here this time is much easier than what I took uh, last time. It was uh, by boat, which is 18 days on the Pacific Ocean, and by train, which is a few days and all the way coming up. Now all you have to do is to ride on uh, Canadian air and you'll be here in no time. So what I have witnessed in the last few decades is huge improvement just in the field of transport. But more than that, actually is a lot of improvements, a lot more productivity, and a lot of innovations in many, many other fields. For, for instance, many years ago, a lot of people thought those incurable diseases were incurable. But now, thanks to the researchers and the medical personnel, they have made them curable. And as a matter of fact, some of them has been extinguished, those diseases. Uh, when you look back at the Greek soldier running the marathon just to give the message, and that they have won, they have beaten the persons. Today, what you need to do is to hold up your apple, punch a few numbers, and you can show them on the picture there that the Greeks have won. So all, all these are little innovations, but it certainly makes the world a lot richer, more productivity, and more productive. But it just doesn't happen like this but rather is the result of probably uh, several components. And most important of these components are two. One would be the software that we are certainly indebted to the teachers, researchers of the past era who discover a lot of the laws of the physics, a lot of the chemistry, a lot of other things so that we try to understand the uh, rules of nature. And after that, the second component that comes in, you need to have a lot of energy. Started with the steam power, but later on with electricity. The world today, if there are no knowledge research, if there are no energy, I don't think we would be that much more different than the uh, man who lives in the caves, those Stone Age people. 
the humankind has evolved an improvement from the stone cave age to what it is today, where we take the conveniences and the productivity for granted. But actually, it just, just didn't happen like this. But rather, it was generations and generations of people who labor very hard in the laboratories, in the pursuit of knowledge, in the pursuit of really uh, getting the theories right to make it work. Uh, in my hotel, I was reading a little bit of history of Winnipeg. As late as 1872, Winnipeg is still described as Winnipeg Village. And yet five years later, on the plaque there, you have established this beautiful university. To think that without the university, where thousands and thousands of people over the generations labor intensively, try to teach the young what knowledge is all, all about, try to do the research to further the understanding of knowledge. And this, the software bit, makes the world a lot uh, of difference, makes the world a much better place. So I, en I encourage you, young graduates and students alike, you have a bright future because you have inherited a lot of the privilege, uh, previous knowledge that people have accumulated and is passed on to you. But it, on the other hand, it's your solemn duty that you learn from what you have learned from here and in future and develop it so that you will be leaving the world a better place than you first found it. Now, I want to congratulate the graduates here today because your hard work entitles you here today to receive your diploma and degree. But don't forget, behind that is probably a lot of hardship and support from your parents and your friends and what not alike. So don't forget them. And you owe it to them and to yourself that you work hard to make the world a better place. But on the other hand, the future really depends on how hard our research can get us so that our energy problem will be resolved. To give you an example why I say like this, the world burns about 5 billion tons of coal a year. And it's before long they will be burning 10, million, 10 billion tons of coal a year. And if they keep on burning that, the cost environmental-wise, financial-wise, of finding that kind of coal, finding that kind of uh, transportation, and sending all the CO2 into the air is not sustainable. But I am an optimist. I believe that through research, there would be uh, breakthroughs so that we can tackle the problem. Now, I mentioned that Winnipeg is very cold. Yes, it still is very cold. But the warmth of the Manitobans' hearts makes it really uh, not a problem. I've, uh, I, I'm indeed very grateful and touched by the warmth of the Manitobans. And I'm very glad that I'm one of the alumni of University of Manitoba. So graduates, work hard, and don't forget to make the world a better place. Thank you very much.